previous conversation, we discussed a little bit about animal rights, specifically reptile rights, and how they could be potentially taken away. Today, instead of discussing restriction of our freedoms, I want to talk about how far it should be expanded. Should we, as reptile keepers, be allowed to keep any reptile in existence. That means Komodo dragons, that means no restrictions on exporting into the United States from Australia. Should we be able to keep them all? And I guess taking a step further, should we really be able to keep any animal in captivity? Well, let's hop right into the discussion guys and talk about the personal freedoms and I want to stress personal here. We're not talking about zoos, we're talking about hobbies keepers and their rights and their accessibility to animals the most exotic ones even. Let's go. Hey guys, how's it going? You know, it's the beginning of a new year. Oh, we completely bald. Yellow Aki. Hey guys, how's it going today? Like I said, we are gonna be talking about how free we should really be as hobbyist keepers. Should we have access to some of the most wild, crazy animals out there? and keep them in our own personal care. Is that something we should be able to do? I like to personally call this the Tiger King debacle, specifically because this debate came up between me and my girlfriend when watching the Tiger King because kind of the responsibility of private keepers came up during that whole era. And also cause debacle, that's a funny word I like saying. Now with my past couple videos, you might think I might be playing it safe here a little bit and say, no, us personal keepers should not have access to, let's say, Komodo dragons. I feel like that's a big dream reptile everybody would love to care for. But honestly, guys, I think we should have access to most animals out there, if not all of them. I really think the restriction should come, and please, people who are anti-government, just give me a second to kind of flesh out this idea. By the way, guys, I want to let you know that you can hit that subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner and hit that bell as well for the latest on my crackpot theories. I have plenty of them, trust me. So make sure you're up to date with all my craziness. Anyway, let's move on, guys. I think the restrictions on access should come not from a straight ban like a lot of governing entities are doing right now, but from a separate governing body that hopefully could be more impartial, that could moderate and ensure that we are up to the task of caring for a larger, harder to keep animal, reptile in this case. And yeah, guys, in my mind, this means permitting. Now, permitting itself is really not all that evil. It actually has shown to be quite effective in its rare good uses in the United States. For example, conditional species in Florida. That was pretty successful overall, even though it kind of restricted some access. While overall the conditional species list was pretty well regarded from both sides of the argument, I still think that was much too restrictive. I believe that anyone who wants to care for a specific animal, a specific reptile in this case, should be able to, barring that they possess the means to. And that's where the permitting process comes into place. It could be a potentially long, rigorous process even that could take years depending on, you know, what type of animal, what type of reptile you want to keep, but it ensures that they know you can keep it and that you possess the means, which is like monetarily, knowledge, and all those aspects to allow the animal to thrive. But in the end, anyone can really go ahead and try to get this permit. And there could be even classes sort of along the way to teach you more in order to ensure that you really know what you're getting into and doing. And I think the weeding out, like I said, that will happen very naturally as people go through this process. Not everybody is super committed that they're willing to go years and spend money to care for a specific reptile in this case. So here, unlike the conditional species permitting, people can still get any reptile and not be restricted from them. Conditional species, it was very tight who can have access to the species in that list and really just the ordinary private keeper in Florida really could not. And as indicated, the people that are dedicated enough to go through this on the flip side of the weeding out process, those people probably have enough of a passion for this animal, for this reptile, to care for it properly 
and actually promote this species to the public and show how awesome this species is, make it more known, conservation, kind of what we've really been discussing lately. It is great that there are grants, there is funding to private institutions for professionals to study these more exotic, not typically kept in private hands animals, but it would be even better if we can allow the public to contribute and they could do that on their own dime, really. Just think about how much more we could learn about reptiles if more people had access to them, specifically the ones we really can't get. I think a nearly perfect example of kind of what I'm meaning is the venomous reptile permit in Florida. We're gonna be referencing Florida a lot here, guys. This permit requires you to log a thousand hours with an already permitted institution with the specific reptile, I believe, family, correct me if I'm wrong, before you can get your hands on one in your own private care. You also have to have sort of a plan ready if you were to get bit or someone else was to get bit. There's a lot of things you have to have in place and I really think that is the idea I I'm thinking of. It's a long rigorous process that proves that you're really truly ready and capable to care for this specific reptile. Now here's the problem though with that permit and this is why I said near perfect. It's really hard to find an institution, number one, willing to let you apprentice under them. There's a lot of insurance issues at play here, obviously. And two, the amount of people who actually have that permit are, are very few and far between in Florida as it is. So really, while it might seem very accessible and you just kind of have to go through the steps and go through the process, it really isn't that accessible because you really can't find a mentor, which is required because you can't get the permit unless you log a thousand hours with a mentor. As mentioned, I think this is where the idea of having classes set up comes into play. It's a demonstration, just some place where people can go that want to keep a particular animal, reptile, learn about it, obtain the knowledge required, and then go ahead and be able to keep it after going through the rest of that process just like logging hours for a venomous reptile in Florida. Now, to me, this is the hard part. It's easier said than done. Obviously, with classes, you have to find volunteers or you have to pay someone to do it. You have to find people who keep that animal already. And if that's already really restricted, that pool is very small. There's a lot of barriers in the way for this to happen. Additionally, it would be hard to cover really any animal, reptile, whatever out there and ensure we have some sort of mentor ready to take on apprentices so they could go through this permitting process. These are issues I have not really thought of a good solution to yet, but I do think there is some good to come out of it. Like I said, if a lot of people are keeping these harder to keep, not really kept that much animals, then we have more education on them and it's not funded through any governing society. It's privately funded. So there is that aspect that could come out of it. And additionally, for those animals going endangered, going extinct, putting them in private hands has already been done quite a bit to try to get them breeding and get their numbers back up. So this is a real easy way that we could do this and incorporate that into this permitting process. So I do think there are some juicy pieces of chocolate at the end of the road for this type of setup but I do think there are a lot of restrictions that we need to kind of think about before it's ever plausible. Additionally, guys, something you probably all have been thinking thus far is the ability to trust a governing entity, someone or something that's gonna be overseeing this entire process. That is the real problem here. If we can solve that somehow some crazy way because that has never worked out thus far for really anything ever, we have so many issues then I think the rest of it we, we can find a solution to. Not that this all is gonna happen, I'm not going ahead and making this a reality, but that would definitely be the top issue, is making sure we don't have corruption and we actually have people who are doing this for society in a good way without alternative motives and elements such as that. I mean, come on now, how overhyped is this? whole Tegu thing being, I mean, so many media outlets, number one, let alone the governing societies, but media outlets are acting like Tegus are gonna be like Godzilla coming in the cities and knocking down buildings and killing your children. That's not even close to what Tegus do, capable of, I mean, they really prefer just to come out only to eat. They 
pretty much spend most of their time in their high. Not that their invasiveness is not an issue, it is, but the bands uh, overdoing how much they can affect society, that needs to go and the government really is just buying into that. Anyway, obviously no plan, no thought, no idea is not going to go without issue. There are definitely going to be issues if something like this was to happen, but I do think it gives the most accessibility to any animal out there and there are very beneficial outcomes in terms of education, knowledge, helping conservation. I just see a lot of pluses to this and it's worth the challenge. So, you know, if you're a lawmaker somewhere and you are thinking about ecology, biology, whatever in your state, maybe think about this a little bit and think about what this could do for you. And also, you know, give Professor Herp here some credit. I'd love to hear my name in the news. Alrighty guys, so that's today's video, another discussion. I'm actually gonna kinda keep rolling with the punches with this. I think I've kinda found a good mix of what I enjoy. I like psychology, I like philosophy, and I like reptiles. So I think kind of discussing the social aspect of things, of the hobby, and what's right or wrong, and really discussing the deep thoughts that people are kind of afraid to discuss because there's a lot of controversy. I'm gonna keep moving forward with that. I kind of feel very comfortable in this role. So hopefully this is something you enjoy and you're okay with me focusing on this content a little bit more because there's much more of this to come. But that is definitely enough discussion for today. So I'd appreciate it if you go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. And I will see you guys in the next video on Wednesday. Thanks everyone.